Hello! A few days ago I noticed that my YouTube channel reached 1000 subscribers. So I decided that I should make a few new tutorials. This time I'm gonna talk about texture synthesizing neural cell automata again. Last year we published this article where we show how to train a neural cell automata rule that tries to replicate a texture provided on the given sample image. And while I was mostly happy with the quality of patterns we were able to generate in most of the cases, there were some annoying failure cases. Uh, this is one of the examples. We see that the target image and the result in neural CA generation have pretty different color distributions. And uh, this was especially pronounced in my uh, one of my favorite examples. I really like these linear structures and how they develop, but I was annoyed by inconsistencies between colors produced by neural CA and uh, source image. So today we are going to fix that problem. This article comes with two versions of supplementary code. One is using TensorFlow and the other is a Colab notebook that's using PyTorch. TensorFlow version is what we used to train all uh, models for the demo and also render all diagrams for the article. I consider it to be fixed and static. The PyTorch notebook is small, self-contained, and I like to use it as a starting point for subsequent experiments. Sometimes I even commit uh, my results back to this notebook if I think there are clear improvements on the previous code. Recently, I pushed a new update in which I switched to what I called sliced optimal transport with GG style loss. Let's look at the changes together. New notebook comes with a familiar spots example from DTD textures dataset. And in my opinion, the distribution of colors in neural CA rendered image is preserved much better than before. So I strongly prefer this version to the version from the article. The difference is even more pronounced when using this Mondrian like painting by Franziska Clausen as a target. Let's now look at the changes that enable this quality improvement. I will open the previous version of the uh, style objective function in the new window so that we compare it with the new one. The old objective function was based on a now classical work, a neural algorithm for artistic style by Leon Gattis and his colleagues. This work was published in the year 2015 and got a lot of attention, mainly because of this beautiful image showing impressive style transfer performed by optimization of the input of a trained neural network. The loss function described in the paper extracts information about the target image style in the form of gram matrices computed from activations of the certain layers of pre-trained VGG16 network. When synthesizing the new image, we try to produce a distribution of features that is similar to the target by minimizing the difference between gram matrices produced by the new image and the target image. Features extracted from images by convolutional neural networks are essentially arrays of high dimensional vectors. And what we're actually trying to do with matching gram matrices is matching distributions of high dimensional vectors. But there is actually a more direct way to do this based on ideas from optimal transportation theory. This field focuses on building the most efficient transportation plans between different distributions. Optimal transport has plenty applications. I will add a few pointers to the description of this video. I will also link the notebook that I used to generate the animation you see now. A number of texture synthesis methods is built on the optimal transport ideas. While working on this video, I found a paper called A Sliced Wasserstein Loss for Neural Texture Synthesis. This paper describes an objective function that is very similar to the one 
I'm using to train texture synthesizing cell automata. So I will use this paper as a reference. This paper has some nice diagrams. For example, figure one gives intuition or difference between matching gram matrices and matching probability distributions with optimal transport. We see that gram matrix matching captures only part of the information about the target distribution, while optimal transport objective allows to reconstruct it much more accurately. And the figure number two is a good visualization of the main idea behind the sliced Wasserstein loss or sliced optimal transport. It's known that in order to compute optimal transport in one dimension, we only have to sort points coming from both distributions and then compute the pairwise distances between projections of those uh, points on a single line. So the idea behind sliced optimal transport is iteratively projecting both current and target distributions into random lines and averaging losses computed for different projections. The paper also comes with the concise pseudocode for sliced Wasserstein loss, which is similar to the code that I wrote for cell automata training, but also has some important differences that happen to be meaningful for getting better patterns when training neural cell automata. I'll talk about these differences a bit later. In order to get better intuition about sliced optimal transport, I created this little notebook that shows how to use sliced OT to fit to a dimensional distribution of points. So I implemented the loss function that takes uh, two arrays, array of points and array of targets, a uh, random key that's used to sample uh, unit uh, projection vectors and uh, the number of projections. So first I sample uh, proj and unit vectors that match the dimensionality of uh, points and then I project points on those vectors and targets. Then I sort uh, the projections independently. Then I make sure that uh, each point has a corresponding target point in case uh, those arrays, uh, arrays have different sizes. I just uh, resize the target's array to match the length of points array by using uh, nearest neighbor interpolation. And uh, then I compute the uh, pairwise differences between points and corresponding targets and the loss is just uh, sum of squares of those differences divided by the number of projections. Let's see what would uh, simple gradient descent starting from the cloud of randomly distributed points would look like if we follow the gradient of this loss function. So we start with uh, some randomly distributed points and then do 50 iterations when we compute gradients and make gradient descent steps and visualize point clouds. We see that this uh, simple procedure was uh, sufficient to uh, match randomly sampled points to corresponding positions in the current distributions. There are some randomly scattered, scattered points that are a little bit late, but looks like they will uh, get there eventually if we iterate longer. And the plot, uh, the loss plot looks uh, smooth. So uh, our approximate of the uh, transportation cost uh, isn't uh, that noisy. What I find especially satisfying is uh, extreme case of sliced OT when we are using only one projection per iteration. The loss gets noisier, but uh, I find it very satisfying to watch how optimization manages to bring all points in their positions by just uh, moving them along a single direction at a time. Well, almost all points.
for completeness, I added another loss function to this notebook, which only does gram matrix matching. And we see that matching gram matrices loses a lot of information in two dimensions. Pretty much the only thing it uh, captures is that target distribution is more tall than wide and uh, doesn't reproduce the target shape, although the loss reaches very low values during optimization. I will leave the link to this column notebook in the video description. Let's finally get back to the new Texture and CA training notebook. So here you see that I use the same optimal transport loss to match uh, source and target feature distributions. There are a couple of other differences that are pretty subtle but uh, make huge impact on the quality of results. So first, uh, in addition to uh, getting features from intermediate layers, I also treat input pixels as uh, yet another feature layer, so uh, directly matching colors, RGB colors with uh, optimal transport. And another difference is that uh, in contrast to this uh, pseudocode in the sliced Wasserstein loss paper, uh, instead of averaging the pairwise differences, I sum them. So uh, early layers that have uh, lower dimensionality of uh, feature vectors, but uh, more feature vectors because they are subject to a uh, fewer number of uh, pooling layers that reduce the spatial dimensionality of internal representation, internal feature representation in the VG network, uh, get uh, more influence on the uh, loss. And uh, this also happens to be necessary to preserve the color distributions. Otherwise, it's probably happening that uh, deeper layers start to dominate and deeper layers don't care about color distribution that much. Before I continue talking about other changes in the collab, I'd like to show a few examples of cell automata trained with the new objective function with the target images shown in the corner. Now I would like to show a few changes to this Colab notebook uh, beyond the new objective function. First change is a little UI improvement. So you may see that now the loss plot and the visualization of the, car of the last batch and the text that displays the training statistics don't flicker while training. Uh, this is a pretty small change, but uh, turns out that I didn't know about one feature of uh, IPython Notebook's display function for all these years. Turns out that if we pass special display ID argument to this function, then instead of uh, appending the corresponding output to the current to the outputs of the current cell, it replaces the, well, creates or replaces the existing output with the same ID. This way it's possible to interactively update on update only part of the output, which is very handy when it comes to ad hoc design of uh, dashboards that monitor training progress. So for example, here I update the uh, status string of the training progress and here I update the uh, batch visualization. I uh, edit uh, this argument to I am show function. So it passes this to uh, display 
function and also I update the uh, loss uh, plot here. Uh, another change uh, which I think is pretty important is uh, gradient checkpoint. So uh, a few months ago I happily announced that it's possible to make training much faster if we replace the uh, standard iteration of the CA with the uh, checkpoint gradient checkpointed version which is achieved by using this uh, PyTorch function checkpoint sequential. Well, turns out I was wrong. Uh, the performance improvement was coming from the fact that uh, gradients, they weren't computed properly. And uh, here is a discussion of this issue uh, of PyTorch. So it turns out uh, an easy way to fix this problem is to explicitly set requires grad uh, to true for the uh, input of the CA function, but this makes training a little bit slower as expected. So with this change, with correct gradients, uh, standard uh, non-checkpointed iteration works faster. Although I decided that I'll keep this code and have this uh, flag, uh, which is set default by, defaults, uh, by default, so that uh, users could use it if they have out of memory problems for example if we increase uh, uh, training batches or increase uh, number of uh, ca steps uh, this may lead to out of uh, memory errors and this uh, problem can be mitigated by using gradient checkpointing so i decided to keep this uh, feature and the last change uh, is uh, another helper for video generation. So uh, original video writer uh, allows to uh, generate videos frame by frame and uh, embed them into a notebook. And now I added another writer that I called loop writer and uh, which has uh, the same interface as the video writer but now it produces the um, the video loop uh, by crossfading uh, beginning and ending of the clip so these videos might be a little bit uh, better suited for uh, posting on social media so they now it looks like this so uh, the first second uh, gets crossfaded with the last second of the clip so we can uh, treat it as a kind of almost seamless loop that's all that i prepared for today's tutorial thank you for listening and before saying goodbye i would like to uh, advertise the next tutorial that is going to be about the trick that i called neural safe fractalization that allows to take a pre-trained model and run it on multiple scales to produce the high resolution image without retraining the neural ca so thank you and see you next time